you're in a competitive series in the quarterfinals of a top tier game yeah. and you let HRE through because you've got a plan. Please tell me you have a plan. One and all, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Age of Empires for Action. We've returned week number two. The reigning champion, Wham, is looking like he's slam dunking his way to the semifinals if this is anything to go by on the draft. HRE got through a rare sight in competitive in 2024. Kiljardi, a strong response. Iabids. This is a matchup that, quote, is... 45-55 if HRE sends it. They're meant to be slightly favored, so other way around. 55% of HRE. And I think that must have been what Kiljardi was going for. You have to be anticipating HRE in this matchup, but still, I'm not entirely convinced. I've been seeing this maybe like four or five times. It rarely comes out. When it does, HRE just full archer pounding in, in Feudal Age kills you. The upsides for Kiljardi do exist, though. We are on Pigeon's View. High View, a new improved version for 2024 that we created with the assistance of Kevayu. Shout out to him for making it come together. And we've got a very interesting spawn. Kiljardi has got the back gold spawn. He's got a very wallable base here. Theoretically, a castle rush is on the table for the Iobids. The question is, what's Waram's response going to be? Can he try to mirror it? Can he beat it? Or does he have to send it? <laughs> this is actually wild. This is a really cool spawn, by the way. What what generation? This is European Temperate. That's very interesting. I've not seen this type of swarm of European Temperate yet. I don't know if Caillou's in chat, like, monitoring this right now. Because we are still tweaking this map. I think my perspective is that Pigeon's view, for this being its first real outing and competitive, really, really impressed. And this is also what the whole map rotation shuffling is about, is getting data for new maps to make them better, to bring them back later in the tournaments, to also use them in big tournaments. Pigeon's view to me has been a resounding success. It is substantially better than its normal version, high view. But this spawn is unique. Usually the biomes can affect the spawn type, but I don't think I've had this one so far in European Temperate. We've basically got an open battleground down the center and forest down the side. This essentially could be a different type of map, almost like an expanded version of Basin, which Avli created. I think a while ago I talked about the idea of this type of map or even in reverse where you'd have this stealth forest in the center and then open ground on the outskirts. Kavayu should be taking notes right now. And that Arkin is dirty. He's trying to go for a deer shove. <laughs> Wait, is he going 2TC? So 2TC and send it in feudal, right? That's really greedy. I mean, if you're going to be this greedy, by the way, like for, I, I just saw Baltu moan about this Arkin. This is actually very reminiscent of another arc in done in the Canadian series. If you guys remember, I believe it was Puppypaw versus Beastie, if I'm not mistaken. Puppypaw walked out into the corner, dropped an arc in on gold, berry, and deer. This one's a bit different, though. He's going to TC drop the berries, I think. Because otherwise, like, you could have arc here. That would have gotten you the stone, the gold, the berries, and you shoving the deer. He didn't even get the full deer shoving, so great interception by Kiljardi. Dude, what is up with these freaking Canadians and their insanely greedy Arkans? In theory, it kind of makes sense, right? Because, like, Kiljardi, he's gone growth wing. He can still play age two, but he's probably thinking age three rush. If he's thinking age three rush, you get to go for a TC, right? The days are gone of Ibid's opening with the Desert Raider to block two TC play because the two TC meta has been dead for a few months now, unless you play a Bassets. So I've got to give it to him, man. This is a really creative opening from Wham. Especially against a sieve that you should be castle rushing, right? Because both of these sieves benefit a lot from age-free relic rush. That is a lot of stone gathering. Wham already has the wood together for it. So does he TC drop, like, what, here? That's actually pretty solid. Secures the gold, the deer, protects the Arkin. Yep, he agrees. Firm handshakes all around. Uh, I'd like to just point out that having Wham cast with me a Rebel Wallow, clearly my ideas rubbed off on him. For example, the TC. Then there's the Dervish Obsession. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, guys, I can't take enough credit. Because I can take it all. Uh, no, so we have got a really cool format here, though. The question now is whether he turns this into a staging point. And what would that staging point look like? Because while this is really cool, Wham's Arkin means he is missing something. Can, can you guys look at this picture? Then look at the top resources and figure out what resource doesn't quite seem to be here. I mean, technically the trees in range. 
he's missing wood. And the usual strategy is to mass archers. You won't be able to here. Kiljadi, by the way, is going to be massing archers. We have horsemen archers coming, and not just that. Is that an outpost rush? What is this game turned into? So he's going to try to block the berries. Yeah, and the gold. There it is. The, the scaffolding's already down. <laughs> Wham! Because he went 2TC, doesn't have a counter to it right now. Wouldn't it be better to have it on wood and have extra pearl for TC? That's not a bad idea, Valtoon. I think the idea, though, is the timing. is like you can build the arc in here and save 50 on the stone. And he went full straggler tree, right? Before building the lumber camp. I think that's the logic, right? Is His efficiency comes from buffing the arc in because he's already gathered the wood in the previous age. Because he did pull the extra workers across quickly. If I had to like punt a guess as to what the, the real big allure of this is. Actually, the bigger allure is clear, guys. You can eventually delete this TC and then build farms all the way around it. This was me at the release of Age of Empires 4. Got to keep it away from the landmarks. It's outpost up. Kiljadi immediately garrisons with the villagers. Interesting choice. I guess you could just mill drop and gather here, but instead he's going to walk all the way home. He does at least have wheelbarrows, so it's going to be quick. As quick as someone can be after they walk their villagers all the way across the map. Not just one, not just two. Three villagers, by the way. His entire growth wing play. <laughs> the true reason why we go growth wing as Iabids, guys. To build outposts. So the outpost is going to be able to block that gold. But I mean, Wham has a backup gold, guys. Like, you're not stopping him getting Castle Age with this play. And to Baltu's point about how you can build prelates, because you have 2TC now, he can just build a prelate at home. And buff the gold. And because he pulled his sheep here, he's got plenty of food in the area. He even gets the deer shove in. What? I can't believe Kiljadi made that mistake. So he no, he lamed the deer here, right? But then, instead of laming the second deer, he just ran home. Oh my god. I mean, sure, it's not everything under, but there's enough deer left here for you to get the value. So that is going to provide value for the Arkin. And is this Burgrave? This has to be Burgrave, right? You could play Regnets. It's very greedy off of 2TC, though. It's a Burgrave! <laughs> Wait, is it? Okay, he just doesn't feel safe. I was about so, so we have got Burgrave Arkin. He almost built his entire base away from his primary TC. <laughs> yeah, that's why he moved it, because the Rams were coming in. So smart choice there. I also think Kiljardi, did he see that? He did. Now, the question in Kiljadi's mind has to be, was he faking me out or is it actually really a Burgrave? Because he built it, then cancelled it. He could have built anything back here. I'm so glad we're staying live late into the evening for this series. <laughs> Archer's coming in. Villager's a little bit AFK there. He has got the E repairs, remember. like this Ramming HRE or Order the Dragon is like the hardest thing to do in the game. At least in the early age. So buys the time. Tech up comes out. He immediately queues up six men at arms. After the E repairs, you still have the villagers nearby for a repair, right? Like Wham can gather off of the tree line. Does need to get some wood in the bank first, though. <laughs> so actually, he stopped at three men at arms. I think he's going to go for the elite tech now, right? Or rather, veterancy. He has got the food and gold. What's Wham waiting for? Okay, there we go. He queued it up. I think he was shifting his economy. So we better push one of the rams away. That's buying time. Just enough repairs to get through this. E repairs coming off cooldown in 30 seconds. And Kiljadi is scaling Desiraiders. In theory, not a bad unit against even Castle Age Men Arms, right? Like, you have got 12 damage being attacked into 5 armor. So you almost mitigate 50% of the damage. But it's an expensive unit. And effective HP is low. Not mentioning the fact your opponent mitigates a lot of damage too. I'm not entirely convinced by the Desert Raider spam. Is this to protect his archers? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess the issue is like you're in age two. What else can you actually build? Age three, you could build age three, but <laughs> it's going to take you two minutes and that's two minutes too long against the Burgrave. Yeah, so it's not quite Camel Archer's level of damage because you're not able to kite a range and kill, but... 
get into melee, at least you can sort of pseudo contest. So the Desert Raider strategy, by the way, really good in Feudal and Feudal against Men at Arms from HRE. Because when it's Feudal and Men at Arms, they do 10 damage and you have 5 armor, right? You win that trade because you do 13 damage, they have free armor on the Men at Arms. And their health is about the set, like is lower than your uh, Desert Raiders, right? Or about the same. But now it's a different script being written. The Men at Arms are on the march. Ram's going to move in. Looks like some harassment on the backside. Good read there by Kiljardi. Just trying to starve the food. We have the static emplacements. We have got the Men at Arms diving in. So the villagers on the other side of the map are going to be found. Kiljardi in retreat now. He's halfway towards attack. He's not dead yet. Ram needs to read and dive. Don't do those two things together. It tends to get the paper really wet. So it's hard to see what you're reading. He does it one by one. He sees what's happening here. He goes in for the dive. I just time on the TC. He can dive beyond this. Now, the cool thing about being Ibids or Abbasids in this situation is you're not just dead. Because as long as you can afford the tech up, the tech up can't easily be stopped. Because you don't need to build it. You just need to tech it. Decent amount of idle time being achieved here, though. Even though it's being returned, I mean, there's already an eco difference of 12. So if you're both idling about 10 villages, Wham's just a mile ahead, especially with the Arkham buffing, probably about like 10 villages on average. He's trying to set up the farms now in a very open area of the map. Kiljardi, meanwhile, is still playing pocket eco in dangerous locations. The knights might find him soon, though. Wham, he has scoured this area, so he should be aware of the berries. Actually, what happened to the berry spawn there? Wait, am I seeing that right? No, no, I think he just... Did he outpost over, or was that only two berries? I've not seen the spawns do that before. Ah, uh, bugged berries. Unfortunate kill, Jody. Apologies, mate. That's rare. I don't think I've seen that so far with the spawns, though. So that's definitely going to be monitored and dealt with for week three. Hopefully. Definitely hurts Kiljadi's scalability a bit, but he still has other resources, the deer, the berry, and the flank. So there are options here. In some ways, these berries actually helped you, mate. He isn't even looking for you. Kiljadi's a, a hungry wild animal. The, but but there is a vegetarian, right? Because he's eating berries. <laughs> yeah, Kiljadi's army is big, guys. What happened to Wabs? <laughs> so distracted by the berries. The men arms got wiped. He's going for a full farm transition, but it's not working. The desert raider pressure, man. <laughs> Kiljani's like, I'm about to run out of berries. What looks like berries? Blood. Give me some blood. And this is not your typical walk-in clinic. No, this is more like vampires right now. Moves in. The village is being found out on the deer. No textiles either. So wow, I'm going to take some losses there. Kiljardi, he still hasn't triggered that tech up. He's very close to the potential for advancement. Instead, he keeps on reinvesting. More Desert Raiders coming. This is a classic killer Kiljardi game. There's two types of, of Kiljardi, guys. There's the one that kills and the one that's stuck in a jar. Now, the one that's stuck in a jar stays at home, booms because he can't get out of his base, refuses to GG when he's down to six villages. The kill type, though, is like a Rottweiler thrown into a kitten pen. Don't know why someone would do that, the poor durable kittens, but you can already picture how that one plays out. Wow, I'm like, what's the answer? Like, is it not archers? Get the tree line protected, scale into triple archer range, right? That would make a lot of sense against desert raiders. I think he's just a bit too tunnel visioned on men at arms at this stage because he built Burgrave. He's even got the two-handed coming. Textiles is coming in. I mean, it makes sense. At this rate, your villagers are going to be your army. Yeah, at least he's got knights still raiding. So this is at least the cool thing, as you can try to play onto the map. But it's difficult if the desert raiders do spot you. Just a little bit of chip damage done and a shuffle away. In fact, if Wham micros this right, no, that's not the... I was about to say, if he micros it right, like this knight could have came back and killed more villagers, right? Instead, a bit of a, a kerfuffle there. Walk straight through the Desert Raider Mass. One's if you think Wham's going to win this. Two's if you think Kiljadi's taking it. Because Kiljadi still has a lot of food to work with, right? Deer here. Berries. Deer. Berries. Berries. It's looking very good. 
I don't know. He's in a really good position. I mean, Wyoming is at least getting more men at arms together, but we said, although it's not ideal, Desert Raider Mass can beat that. As long as you keep numbers in your favor. Wham doesn't really have a real farm transition. I mean, dude, you built your Arkan here to build your farms here. This deeply hurts me. We do have mangoes coming. <sighs> Wait, weren't the Canadians the ones so frequently moaning about Siege? <laughs> This is kind of toxic. He hasn't got that many melee, but enough to hold a choke point against Desert Raider spam, right? Did Crackity buff the Canadians? Crackity, do you receive a percentage of the winning? Can you blink twice if yes? I mean, Kyojadi's caught up, guys. It's H3 and H3. He did go for the advanced moving, right? Yeah, no logistics win play here. So just being cost efficient makes sense. When you've got this many desert raiders, you just want to upgrade it ASAP. Mango Smush comes in now. This is someone I've really been big on drumming home. Mangoes are situational in Castle now. They're not trash full out. They have a position, a role. This is a really cool way of using them. Not being a filthy rat and refusing to come out. It's the unit type you're up against. Desert raiders are low HP, high melee armor. So mangoes count them better. What's more important to remember is Mangoes, although their AoE got reduced, their focus damage is still really good. So where does that work well? Against units that inhabit a location but cost more. So what that means is Mangoes less effective against Mass Archers, right? But Mangoes more effective against Hand Cannoneers or, the state of the Castle Age, Desert Raiders. This is where you go Imp as Giljardi. It's true. It, I, I cannot lie. He does have military ring reinforcement. But Giljardi, although he may be a Chinese main, not a very big fan of booming. Even when he plays a bass as he tries to end the game. It would make sense to keep pressuring from here as well. Right, this is not Regnants, this is not Relic Control, this is a lack of gold. Theoretically. That's Desert Raiders. I tried to test that theory. There's only two mangoes so far. Wham is finally transitioning the arches we talked about. Small raid on the backside, nothing too major. Easily dealt with, but we do have dervishes on the way. So Kiljardi, trying to get his own eco up through different means here. Relic spawns look really good for him. I mean, really good for any whoever has access. I don't know what this one's doing, but most of them are in the mid map, so very good position to try and lean into this from. Well, the reason why Wham hasn't gone for the relics is like he's just a bit too distracted, and also that involves scouting. <laughs> okay, so I have both talked to Wham and Poppy Paw, and you can tell they're twins because they're in sync on this. They both hate Stealth Forest. I could never tell they hate Stealth Forest based on the scouting, right? Like, <laughs> you'd never be able to guess they hate Stealth Forest. Meanwhile, Kiljardi. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's some peak scouting right there. Horseman now from Kiljardi as well. He has got crossbows coming alongside. This is very expensive. So I talked and bragged about his food. He has a lot of it, right? Not for long. There's a growing risk Kiljadi's going to have to make a farm transition. And if he does... Wham's going to catch up. He's already deep on the farms, right? Like, how many deep are we? Probably about 30? Yeah, 23. 24 soon. They aren't around the Arkin, though. That's the good news. Although that's starting to change. I love this Sif. Love the way that they just build outposts and then build springholds. And then make me lose the game. Um, the good news is there's no relics. Yet. Actually, I don't think there's ever going to be relics for him. This is a five relic game for Kiljardi. I'm just trying to defrag my mind as to what's going to happen in game two, dude. Like This is only the first game of this series. <laughs> Look, army value? Silly Baltoon. We don't trust those inferior numbers. Didn't you hear? Capture Rage doesn't know how to count. What was it? It doesn't count wood, right? 
I think it counts gold. It counts food. It's like, this army value is a lie. Kiljani's army is worth even more. <laughs> Admittedly, Wams isn't being calculated quick, uh, correctly either. I feel like Kiljani needs to surround. Yeah. I mean, but the problem is, like, <laughs> Wams not going to come out. He's doing a beastie here. He's playing HRE and not coming out of the base. He's playing for the late game. He's got Siege to hold in. Admittedly, he's had to build a lot of arches, right? So it's a bit different. But two mangoes is really tricky. Like, you've gone crossbows and desert raiders. It counters you. That's why he's switching horsemen now. But without massive farms, horsemen is not easy to execute. Like, late game, you mess up horsemen, you build more horsemen. You mess up horsemen, you build even more horsemen. Mid game, you mess up horsemen... You lose. I like how Wham's just trying to mock people who said cavalry is too good. While giving up on massing men at arms and building massages. <laughs> I know where the real problem lies here. So, Wam, would you like to explain to us just how much you hate Stealth Forest? <laughs> he still doesn't know. You know what the best part would be? Is if Kiljadi walks here and dies with a relic, and Wam finally realizes there's a relic on this map. Puppy hates them more, that's true. You moan, but not as much as your bro. Oh, for God's sake, we've reached that point. <laughs> So the rams that did not work out 10 minutes ago have returned. Only this time, there's a lot more static defenses. There's still E-repairs. In fairness, there is a lot of archers from WAM. But not for long. Spears are getting spammed. Also, wait. Is WAM really saying cavalry is not a problem while playing the Civ that has the faster moving spears? I'm going to stroke my chin on this one. What's Kiltani's out here? Build more mangoes? I mean, kind of, but we talked about like why mangoes are really good against desert raiders and crossbows and less good against archers. The focus fire works better against premium units. So yeah, a little bit of an awkward situation here. I wonder if he could have went mangoes instead of horsemen. It would have given him more longevity with his food. So then need to rush into bombs, which has to happen soon. Clash coming in. Wham, well, easily able to walk away. Kill Jardy. I don't know what we're expecting to happen here other than death. That's a, still a lot of spears. He hasn't got archers, guys. It's crossbows. You don't clear this up quickly. He is going to reach the back line eventually. He's got a handful of horsemen left over. The mangoes. Probably best to be left behind here. They don't have marching drills. Instead, he tries to protect them. Second wave of spears is now coming in. The horsemen pretty much deleted. They're gone. The mangoes can now start to pick apart that back line. Unless the Desirees want to go melee. Yeah, a little bit scramble there from Kiljardi. Like, maybe the best approach would have been to go east and west with the horsemen. Maybe just throw the Desirees away as a kind of pseudo front line. But this wasn't it. Rams are distracted. Didn't work out too well either. Kiljardi, all of a sudden, every ounce of momentum he had seems to have evaporated. Alright, I'm going to take the bait from Wab. Of course, horsemen aren't a problem in Castle. I think the bigger highlight, and I've actually, like, I'll, I'll happily, like, frost the sword in the air and wave it about and say I've talked about this. Desirees in particular in the Imperial Age, please. Incineraries, biology, nah, they're a bit too good. I think the point that people have been trying to make is in the late game, horsemen feel better because they have the mobility and their stats feel buff compared to spears that feel nerfed. Which I can kind of, I can nibble out, I can understand where they're coming from. But yeah, Horseman and Castle Age is still depressing. It's almost like you want to have a light upgrade in Castle Age on top of Veterancy that you can reach, right? They just always feel weird. I'm trying to think games that I've watched Mass Horseman in, in Castle win. And I feel like most of the examples I have, it's because they scaled it in Feudal. Oh, wow, wow, wow. What a big shock and surprise here in my quarterfinals. HRE is going to get a win. Actually, um, I think the bigger surprise is HRE actually not getting banned. 
And Killjoy's like, hmm, these mangoes, maybe they can help me. Maybe when it was just archers, but now that it's mass spears, you kind of need a front line. And Killjoy doesn't have one. He has villagers. I mean, they don't need to know they're going to be the front line. Just don't eye it, textiles and go. And ah, yes, the real reason we build Burgrave. So that we can t let him gather all five relics and then take all five relics. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Life is good. Oh. Four relics just like that. Delayed investment schemes. Mm. But, you know, I think Wham intentionally done this so that he could have the noise of picking up relics four times in a row. You guys ever do that? It's like when you play Delhi and you pick five at once. It just has, oh, makes you makes your toes curl. You're like, yeah, 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 I'm just going to drop them so I can hear it again. What the f- <laughs> All right, Wham's like, I haven't played this in a while. Maybe the meta's changed. Should we just build an L's pack? I mean, he went 2TC, right? And now, for one of the most toxic landmarks in the game, we just never realize it because it's never seen. Hell's Bat Palace coming in. Kujadi doesn't even have a chance to survive in Castle, let alone the Imperial. Well, that's going to be a win for HRE. And I think that might be the first pick of the week. And a reminder as to why you should ban at every single bloody series ever under the sun. Game one goes to Wham. Let me know what you thought about this one, guys. Big fan of the Arkin, big fan of the TC, or disappointed the Canadian didn't build his Burgrave, also away from the primary? Let me know in the comments. I'll catch you in the next one.